Hello, it's Karen and welcome back everyone. I'm, I have to apologize because I'm doing kind of a back-to-back -back video. I'm doing another one about laminating folders and I don't normally do the same videos back-to-back -back, but I had my laminating pouches out and I got these Arteza gouache paints uh, from Amazon and somehow I saw the two of them on my desk and I thought, hmm, I wonder would they go together? So today it's I've got more tips and tricks about using laminating folders. I promise my next video will not be about laminating folders, but I just thought I would share with you the good, the bad, and the ugly of what I have been playing with um, in the hopes that maybe it would help save you from putting things through your laminator that maybe shouldn't have gone through. So here's the first little little uh, technique that I tried is using these gouache paints. Now I've separated the laminating folder there and I'm using this Liquitex acrylic medium. You can use this Heidi, uh, Heidi Swap, the Mink um, clear texture paste or Distress, oh no, Ranger texture paste and clear transparent, I think it is, or glossy gel. I've used that before, but I ran out and I found the Liquitex and actually I think it's much more economical to use that. So as you can see on the right there, I've mixed some of those paints with some of that Liquitex. Now why I chose the stencil, I have no idea, except I thought it would make a fun birthday card, shaker card sort of cover. So that's what I did there. It was a bit of a hot mess. Um, and I'm just sprinkling on some Lawn Fawn Chunky Glitter there. So I left that. Now I did leave it to dry. I'll show you after how these laminated so you'll get an idea. But this is it up close so you can see the circles are all pretty good circles. So here's another piece. I'm using the dull side. So the dull side is up of the laminating pouch. And I have my stencil, and on the right is some more of that gouache paint. And I mix the two colors of green. Really, that one lighter green is too light, but I, I was using that. So I'm just spreading that on, just sort of blending it through. And here's my stencil is kind of bad on that left side. I tried to emboss it once, and I had <laughs> too much pressure. But there you can see what it looks like before it's laminated. Now this is the first one after it's come through the laminator. And for the most part, those circles kept their shape. There was a couple that I think maybe it hadn't dried enough and they smeared a little bit. Over here with the hearts, that was just extra red paint that I just put down. And there was a bit of that smearing there as well, but I think that was from the stencil. Now, with the excess green paint that I had, I just put it on that cardstock on the left just to see the difference. So here it is laminated, and both sides are just quite beautiful. There's a really nice shine to that gouache paint, and uh, the Liquitex helps that. It sort of extends the paint. So I thought that turned out quite well, and the card is pretty as well. So kind of fun that that is like a, a, deck, a designer acetate. Okay, this is a different technique. Well, sort of different. I'm using a different medium. This is Cosmic Shimmer Luna Paste, and Luna Paste has the most beautiful shine. There's so much mica in it that it just really shines no matter what you do with it. So I thought I would try that in a laminating folder to see how it turned out. Um, and you can see it here before it's gone through the laminator. Now it needs to dry and I'll show you coming up how this one turned out. Uh, so really quite pretty. It kept the stencil shape really nicely. So the one on the left is the one I was just working on and I had put it aside to dry for a while but apparently not long enough. So I redid it and this is how it turned out after it had dried. And really, I think that's just just gorgeous. So the left one, you can see it's smeared. Uh, it came out in my laminator. <laughs> so don't do that, guys. Put it aside and just let it dry. Okay, so I'm going to show you now what I have run through the laminator. These are uh, glitters. So the one on the left, that's from Walmart. It's just a, a cheap silver glitter. 
but it worked quite well. The next one is this Distress Glitter Dust, which I used in my last video, and it's beautiful. Then there's the Mica Flakes. I also used that in my last video. And it's just a nice, clear, frosty kind of a color. And then the last one there is Stampendous Shaved Ice. And I don't like it as much. In the jar, it looks nice and white. But when you put it on, it goes that pinky purple color. And you, ch you turn it against the light, and it goes a bluey green. But it's not a frosty kind of uh, icy look that I would have liked. So, but they all laminated really well. So if you have those, I'm sure that they would work. So here's a few more. Uh, on the far left there is the Lawn Fawn Chunky Glitter, which is what I put in that first um, sample with the, uh, the Arteza paint with all the dots. And it, ha it breaks out into lots of different colors. It's also not clear. Then there is the Rock Candy from Distress uh, as well. That next one, the red one, is just from the dollar store. It's just some micro glitter. This one I definitely would not recommend. It's more of a chunky glitter. Now it didn't come out in the laminator, but it also didn't seal very well. So if I work at this, it turns into a shaker because all those little bits are loose. So I wouldn't recommend chunky glitter at all. Then I tried embossing powders. So that was a Nouveau, I think, copper embossing powder. And I was just sprinkling these on. So I think if you stamped with Versamark and um, sprinkled on after that, it might work better. You can see that white one, I just had way too much and it turned into uh, like a soup. Uh, but, but most of these worked quite well. This one on the right is from Cosmic Shimmer. Uh, those are embossing sprinkles and they are meant to stay kind of lumpy and chunky like snow So they are quite thick little beads and it gives a very nice snowy effect You're meant to put them on top of the card and then heat the card from underneath. So That worked really well. I thought in the laminator Kind of different so then I moved on to trying pastes. So here, these are those, one of those is that Luna paste, the blue one, and then this is Ultra Sparkle Texture Paste, which has a really pretty sparkle in it also. But they both went through the stencil really well, if you notice. So I thought that was kind of fun. On the left there, I just spread them with a palette knife, and then on the right, I put it through a stencil, and they kept their shape. And in fact, I thought the back side was uh, more sparkly than the front side. I don't know if you guys think that. It definitely looked it to me. Kind of fun though. So then I went on, I tried some Nouveau Glacier Paste and it also worked really well through the stencil and just being spread on. Um, beside that, the silver one is a Brutus Monroe Glitter Glaze and it worked really well. And then I tried Stickles um, Glitter Glue. So I just put little little dots on there. They did flatten out a bit, but they pretty much kept their shape. And I did put all of these aside to dry, just FYI. <laughs> but you can see there's a little slight halo around those, which I didn't mind. Okay, now if you're like me, you may have lots of these in your drawer. These are those leftover pieces of foil from either uh, foiling with deco foil uh, or I've done it with my hot foil. I'll show you those in a little bit here, but I have a drawer of these. Well, not quite a drawer, but a lot. And I keep thinking, oh, I have to spray them with glue and put them on cardstock, but then I go to do that and they end up wrinkling and they don't look so good. So I trim these down and I have a rotary trimmer, so it works really well for cutting that foil. But I just uh, trim them so all these edges were off and on this one, I had a few, a little bit of uh, excess foil, so I just used my sand eraser to get rid of that. So there you go. And then I put them in laminating pouches. And I'm going to put these in my parchment carrier. Now, because there's no glitter on these, I didn't need the cardstock shims, but uh, I just used that one little piece of card just to help feed it through my laminator.
And when these came out, I was so happy because they're beautiful. They, they're they nice, they're flat. I think if I'd looked after them better in my drawer, they might not have been quite so scratched up. But there's there are those things that you know you know you should be using, and I just don't because it's such a pain to do it. But in the laminating folders, they're just super easy. They turned out really well. So then I thought, okay, I'll do it with my hot foil pieces. And they turned out really well as well. And both sides are really pretty. They, they've always got that short, sort of shiny silvery back. So then I thought I better cut these and make sure they don't come apart. And they didn't. They were great. So I just uh, cut them with a bit of extra around them so I could trim them down if I needed to. And I thought that was just really quite fun. I cut out that one little flower and you could put it on the one of the laminated pieces or on a card. So I was just playing with that there. So we don't have too much to show you. Um, I made this one card, but mostly I was trying to make some tags because I desperately need tags for Christmas. So this was that holly laminated piece that I did, and I did get this little teeny tiny tag out with a teeny tiny <laughs> space to write a message. But I thought that was kind of fun as a shaker card. Now this was the Arteza gouache paint and I used a Tim Holtz stencil for that. And while the stencil was on in place after I had put the paint on, I sprinkled on some of that Distress glitter dust. And it's once everything dried, it went through the laminator perfectly and you could see the glitter dust on it. This I believe was a memory box cabin snow globe die and I had the the foiled snowflakes on the bottom. I just added in some mica flakes and that those embossing sprinkles from Cosmic Shimmer. And I just, I thought that was kind of pretty. On the back, I die cut another snow bank for, where, so you could write the message there. Now I don't have very good tag dies, so I was looking in my stash. I came up with these circles. That circle on the inside is from MFT. Uh, and I just cut the inside circle a little bit bigger so you could write a message there. For this one, I had that sleigh already die cut. It's from Paper Rose, and the snowflake is from Simon's Stamp. And I just had a circle underneath uh, the laminating pouch, and I went around it with white pigment ink, um, Hero Arts Unicorn White, and then added the mica flakes to that. Now these, that Mary uh, sentiment die, I already had these die cut and just sitting in my stash waiting to be used so I thought that was great that I could use these up and I just added a little confetti into the laminating pouch and that turned out really well. I added the, the tags on the back just as somewhere to write um, and went around the edges with a bit of distress ink. Uh, these two now I had the that was a foiled background, a snowflake background or border die, and I cut it in half, added in some uh, the silver sparkles from Walmart, those ones I showed earlier, and the embossing sprinkles, and ran that through and then added the white on the back as well. Now this is that foiled piece that was a scrap that I had. I cut a white flower, added some silver beads to the center, and then a white um, you know, a little piece on the back where you could write a message, and that'll be for a wedding gift, I guess. This one I turned into a shaker tag. Uh, that was the foiled piece, the scrap again. And this little teeny tiny guy is also one of the foiled pieces that I had left over. Uh, so I thought that was great to use up those foiled scraps. And I mean, some of the, the die cuts that I had, I got to use up in tags. So there you have it. I hope that's a little bit of inspiration. Thanks for joining me once again, everybody, and I hope to see you again next time. Have a great day.